Hello and welcome to GMBN Tech where we are in sunny Scotland. It's round one of the EWS in Tweed Valley and I'm here on the scout for the hottest tech. Now I've already spotted some prototypes. Let's go and have a look. So this is the brand new HB916, which is Hope's brand new high pivot enduro bike, which we started to see last year, but it's just starting to come out. This is one of the team riders custom jobbies. So we've got a custom paint job, but the frame should be largely what we will see released later this year. So you've got a carbon front triangle, carbon rear, and the rockers and the links here are all CNC machined, all made in house in the UK, which is really cool. Uh, not to mention this new little butty holder here which is for all your sandwich needs and tools of course and up top we've got some brand new tech 4 brakes which is the new shape and the new levers so the v4s and i've noticed a brand new stem as well creeping in here i don't know what that is but that's obviously something that's coming out and these black hubs here they're unmarked because they look like the new pro 5s on the go now, they won't tell us what's going on inside of them, but that's something that will probably pop out later this year or next year. Um, and I'm noticing, obviously, the custom paint job. We've also got some custom etchings on the cranks, which is really cool, matching up to the custom etchings on your brakes, which you can get, but you can't get any custom etchings down here. So that's really nice. Um, and another thing is that they've got their own custom Hope uh, dropper lever as well, which they don't know if they'll put it to market, but basically they said they couldn't get hold of any dropper levers, so they made their own. And it's got this cool little dial on the front, which has come out of their brake levers, and is basically a reach adjuster, which, yeah, loving this bike. So I've just walked past the GT pits, and this is Noga Karem's custom painted GT Force, obviously their high pivot enduro bike. And obviously the paint job attracted me here, but what I've noticed up close is we've got this CNC machined linkage down here, which is clearly a prototype. And now that I'm looking at it, this is a small wheel on the back. So obviously GT must be testing mullets at the moment. I've seen this on uh, K Katie Winton's bike as well. Obviously Noga and Katie are smaller riders, but I can't help but notice that Windmasters has a new linkage as well. So it looks like Noga is running 36s up front. That looks like a 160 fork. Now the force is generally a 170. Katie and Wynn are both running 38. So they're on the standard 170 setup. She's obviously gone for um, the shorter travel up front, maybe steepening up that head angle. And I know they've been testing in Dunkeld up in the Scottish hills with telemetry. So they must be trying out something new internally with Fox as well so keep your eyes peeled I think there's some interesting stuff going on with this team so I've just spotted the new Switch 7 from Orange, their new enduro bike. It's 170 front and rear. It's mixed wheel size only, which is really interesting. And obviously the big news here is that Orange are using a linkage. Would you believe it? Trunnion mounted and also giving you more space for a water bottle on the top tube up there. This is the factory spec, which you'll be able to buy uh, around about mid July and it's come in this stealth green, which is an incredibly dark British racing green. And basically the whole thing came about um, because the rider feedback last year in the longer stages in places like Whistler and Finale, they found that they were heating up their shocks on those long descents and they wanted something where they could run a coil. So this is a much more progressive uh, suspension design here. And yeah, it will be the first time they've run it here in Scotland and I'm excited to see how they do. So I'm here at the privateer tent with Fergus Ryan, the EWS racer, and I've noticed what looks like a normal privateer 161 here that's a smaller wheel on the back is it not it is indeed yeah <laughs> we've uh sort of been been testing it for a little while now um just just basically a shorter rear end um to accommodate the uh, mullet mullet setup and yeah it's pretty exciting i'm really enjoying it so far um and yeah i think it will definitely suit these tighter tracks uh, here for inners so yeah so you've obviously got a new back end on there, so that's obviously in prototype at the moment. Do we Are we going to be seeing a mullet coming into production sometime soon? 
yeah, it's definitely something we're looking at. Um, we've, we're definitely, you know, using this as, as a test to sort of see whether it works. So far, I'm really happy with it. So, yeah, I'd say it would definitely be something to uh, be looking at maybe for future bikes and future products. Right, it's looking great in RAW. Now, obviously, you can buy that um, at the moment, but we've got a couple of other non-standard things on here. So we've got some new wheels, is this? Yep, um, again, um, still prototyping. We're still in the prototype stage, but hopefully should be releasing shortly. Um, they are slightly wider rims and uh, have a completely new carbon layup, um, slightly thicker on the back just to give you a bit more stiffness. And then um, again, just slightly thinner on the on the front just to give you that bit more compliance. Um, and they also have a um, different number of spokes, so slightly less spokes on the front again to give you a bit more compliance. Um, yeah, but I'm again loving it so far. Um, definitely loving the carbon, just holds the line a bit better. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's really good so far. How do you feel about running aluminium frames with uh, carbon proven wheels there? Yeah, so um, I was on a carbon, full carbon bike previously and it was, you know, really, really stiff. Um, but yeah, having gone on to Privateer, just it's so noticeable, like less fatigue with the compliance of the frame. Then, but then with the carbon wheels, it just, you know, rolls better and uh, yeah, it seems to take the hits a little bit better. And uh, yeah, I'm loving it so far. Excellent. And you've got an O-chain on here as well. That's not a standard build, is it? No, definitely not. Um, the O-chain has been fantastic. Um, really was a game changer. We put it on probably six weeks ago now. Um, did some timed runs and yeah, definitely some surprising results. I would recommend to anyone to, uh, who's racing to give one a go. Um, and do you think we'll be seeing that on Privateer Builds soon? Something we're looking into. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say that you'd, you'd have to ask the guys uh, who are designing, you know, doing the product stuff. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something I'd be recommending they put on. And uh, certainly if it's not a uh, OEM product, I suggest that everyone buys one because it works amazingly. <laughs> Thanks very much, Fergus. So I'm just walking past the Olin's tent here and I noticed a Deviate which looks like a Highlander, but that's a 184 cut the front there. Tell me, what have we got here? So this is our uh, our new bike from DV8, it's uh, called Claymore. So yeah, this is our enduro bike, uh, it's got a bit longer, a bit slacker, we've got 100 mil up, uh, 180 mil up the front now, which is quite a big bump up from the 170 or 160 that we had on the Highlander. Uh, so it's a 63 and a, uh, and a half degree head angle, so a bit much slacker for the steeps. Uh, the reach is growing for a size large, we're up to 490. Uh, yeah, and like steepened up the seat angle as well to compensate for that, for getting you up the steeper climbs. Now uh, explain to me, you're a Scotsman, what on earth is a Claymore? It's a big sore, it's like a <laughs> weapon, you know. It's gonna, gonna do some damage. <laughs> right, so we're gonna do some damage to the trails on here. And I'm noticing this is a really subtle dark green. Where, where have you stolen this from? Ah, oh, I don't know, it's some fancy cars, you know, that we quite like the look of, so... That's a Porsche, no? Yeah, it might be, it might not. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely. So you can run this 170 as well as 180? Yeah, you got the, you got the option. If you want a slightly steeper head angle, go 170, get a 64 degree head angle. Yep. Cool, well, thank you very much. Looking very pretty. No problem, thank you. So I'm here with Dan Wolf from Polygon Factory Racing and uh, well this is the worst kept secret in uh, mountain biking this year isn't it? This is yeah. definitely a prototype. What can you tell me about this new linkage system? Okay so it is um, their IFS system so the independent floating system um, and basically what they've managed to do is they're separating the lower or the chainstay or they're isolating that from the frame um, which helps to give it a upward travel path initially before it starts to come forward and um, that's been the biggest thing for me or what they've tried to do is like take out or help riders on square edges rough stuff um, and braking because for enduro I mean like speaking from experience I brake really late I probably don't take the best lines a lot and um, the first kind of 30% of your travel this goes upwards and that makes a huge difference for me anyway. So um, yeah, that's... Ace, and I, I actually saw a, a little slow-mo video of you on Instagram, oh, yeah. breaking around a corner on some bumps oh, yeah. and that, that linkage was still definitely working. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing, like that's just, well, that's classic me, break where you shouldn't. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's that's the thing we noticed. And like they asked me at the start before they started this project, they're like, "What do you want out of a bike, or what do you need for for racing?" And I said, "Look, it's not pretty a lot of the time when you're racing world enduros. 
and we do break in the wrong places and I break in the middle of corners and it's awful. So I want my suspension to be active and that's when they started working on this and um, yeah, uh, like pfft, it's been amazing for me and then also like when you add in the O chain that just kind of, that actually does help with your braking. It, it's subtle but it just helps your contact or your footprint on the ground a little bit more and you can just get like kind of better, uh, better braking in. So yeah. It's huge. I actually don't even remember what the question was now. <laughs> you said it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what other things have we got going on here? I'm noticing some prototype Kenda tyres. Are you allowed to talk about these? You know what? I haven't actually been told what I can say or what I what I can't. Um, all I can say is there's going to be three iterations or three variations in the DH casing and um, they're unreal. Like, so, so comfortable and um, I would say grippier than anything I've ridden, so yeah. Okay, Ace, thanks very much. Well, thanks for talking to us. No worries, cheers. Wow, what a day. So many prototypes, and I'm pretty sure I saw so many prototype tyres as well, so keep an eye out for that in the races. I think my favourite has got to be the custom paint job and that GT of Nogas behind me with the old school paint splatter. So GT. Anyway, stay tuned tomorrow for more Hot Tech. <laughs>